Welcome to my course on genome editing and engineering and uh, as part of module 5 on zinc finger nuclease uh, technology, we are going to discuss today how we design uh, zinc finger nucleases uh, for genome editing. So, this uh, lecture uh, we will study about the design of the zinc finger motifs uh, to bind to DNA targets of our interest. We already have studied about the zinc finger domains in the earlier lecture uh, where nature offers us many zinc finger motifs and which bind to diverse uh, DNA sequences. And today we have the capability to modify those zinc finger uh, domains and make them uh, specific uh, to our own needs. So, this we all started with uh, basic research on uh, zinc fingers as well as the Falcon endonuclease that we uh, studied in the last uh, lectures. And we know now that uh, a JLFP or a zinc finger protein domain consists of three link uh, JF modules and they bind to cognate DNA site and carries out activities like transcription. And FOC1 has a bipartite structure with a separable uh, DNA binding domain and a non-specific uh, cleavage domain. Now, put, in, put this uh, JLFP and uh, FOC1 uh, knowledge together, uh, a, a, a artificial enzyme can be uh, constructed which you call as zinc finger nucleases and they are basically synthetic uh, chimeric proteins. Uh, which uh, are composed of a specific zinc finger DNA binding domain linked to a non-specific FOC1 DNA endonuclease cleavage domain. However, overall these JDFNs bind to specific DNA sequences and cleave as per our uh, requirements or desire. This is one of the glaring examples of uh, the findings of basic research uh, being taken to the translational stage and this has revolutionized uh, the genome engineering technology uh, in a big way. So, you have come to know about uh, Srinivasan Sandrasekharan's work uh, in the uh, last uh, class and here uh, he defined the functional domains. Uh, of the FOC1 nuclease and uh, you can see this paper which was being published in uh, PNS and uh, this is the most important findings uh, amongst others in this paper. The modular structure of the enzyme suggests that it may be feasible to construct chimeric endonucleases of different, different sequences by linking other DNA binding proteins. So, this is something very, very remarkable uh, because you have a catalytic domain which is non-specific. So, if we uh, attach it that to other kind of DNA binding motifs, so we can engineer uh, other uh, uh, nucleases uh, with uh, diverse uh, specificities. Another work which is considered as a uh, landmark work is the work by Pavletti Chen Pebo uh, in 1971. Uh, they found out from the crystal structure of the three finger ZIF 268 bound to DNA that each finger used amino acid positions in minus 1, 3, and 6 of its alpha helix to contact a 3 base pair subsite of the DNA. So, this knowledge we are going to use extensively in the design of artificial uh, gene fingers. With all these uh, findings, uh, uh, this seemingly simple mode of recognition of zinc fingers inspired many scientists to engineer zinc finger nucleases and create custom DNA binding proteins which can stimulate gene targeting at specific genomic loci in insect, plant and human cells. Using a linear array of several engineered zinc finger domains, many molecules were generated uh, soon, this seemingly simple mode of recognition 
inspired scientists to engineer zinc finger nucleases to create custom DNA binding proteins which can stimulate gene targeting at specific genomic loci in insect, plant and human cells. Using linear arrays of several engineered zinc finger domains can be generated and the connecting the individual DNA binding modules with a highly conserved uh, linker uh, sequence also can be carried out and it become uh, possible to create uh, polydectyl ZFPs that recognize long sequence of DNA with high specificity. For creating such polydectyl uh, ZFPs, a uh, numerous platforms uh, has been used uh, like uh, the modular assembly platforms. However, uh, using uh, these modular assembly platform become uh, turned out to be very tedious and complex uh, in majority of cases uh, due to the lack of reagents and protocols that permit rapid cross platform mixing and matching of the various zinc finger modules uh, uh, which are not easily available. Other problems uh, included influence of adjacent modules in a polydectyl zinc finger which can have cooperative effects that affect activity of the entire DNA binding array. Wright and his associates have compiled a comprehensive uh, publicly available archive of plasmids coding more than 140 well characterized zinc finger modules together with complementary web based uh, software uh, GFIT for identifying potential zinc finger target sites in a gene of interest. They also standardized the reagents on a single platform enabling facile mixing and matching of modules and transfer of assembled arrays to express vectors without the need for specialized knowledge of zinc finger sequences or complicated oligonucleotide design. In addition, uh, they have also described a bacterial cell based reporter assay for rapidly screening the DNA binding activities of assembled multi finger arrays. Screening with this protocol can be completed uh, in uh, approximately 24 to uh, 26 days or less than a month. So, these are the various uh, plasmids uh, you can see uh, PC3XB ZF1 uh, to uh, 141. We have only listed here few for your understanding and uh, they have different uh, IDs ZF1 to ZF141 and all these 141 molecules have different identified different target uh, DNA sequences ranging from GAA to RGA and uh, these are the uh, ZF uh, protein uh, sequences. Most of these uh, ZFs are 30 amino acid long, however many uh, shorter ones are also uh, now uh, reported and you can uh, visit this site by adzins for further information and uh, there is a spreadsheet containing information for all these 141 zinc finger plasmids. Uh, as a CSV file which is uh, downloadable. Now uh, let us move to the work of three scientists namely YJ Keen, JSA and S. Uh, Sandra Sekharan uh, in 1996. They reported the deliberate creation of novel site specific endonuclease by linking two different zinc finger proteins to the cleavage domain of FOC1 endonuclease. So, they have not only found out earlier that the binding domain and the catalytic domain of FOC1 are uh, in two separate domains and if you uh, divide them into two different domains, the catalytic activity is retained. So, to this uh, catalytic domain, they joined uh, zinc finger uh, proteins or zinc fingers to give create a new type of specificity. So, it uh, became possible to create artificial nucleases that cuts DNA near a predetermined site. With all these uh, sequence specificities at our disposal, today we can design uh, so many different kind of ZFNs by using uh, ZF motifs as power of our uh, DNA of interest and fusing those modules along with a with the nucleus domain of uh, FOC1 and this was 
first pioneered by Chandrasekharan and his group and published in, in PNS in 1996. So, what are the different zinc finger engineering uh, platforms? So, briefly we have mentioned about the modular design of uh, zinc finger uh, proteins. So, uh, zinc finger consortium established uh, to ensure and to promote continued research and development of engineered zinc finger technology has enlisted three protocols uh, which can be used for design of uh, ZFNs. So, they are most basically the modular assembly method uh, for engineering uh, zinc finger arrays. The other is the CODA or the context dependent assembly method for engineering zinc finger arrays and open or oligomerized pool engineering method for engineering zinc finger arrays. There are uh, another method uh, called the 2 plus 2 strategy. Uh, this is however a proprietary platform uh, uh, and uh, details are not available and we will not discuss about this uh, platform uh, in this uh, lecture. Uh, this is just to uh, uh, inform that apart from these three other technologies are also available. Let us first focus on the modular assembly as the name suggests uh, and we, we assemble uh, the JLF modules one by one uh, and then attach it uh, to a, a nucleus enzyme. So, the first generation uh, JLFP design entailed the use of a modular assembly in which individual zinc fingers were optimized against target triplet DNA sequences and linked together to form 3 or 4 JLFPs against 9 or 12 uh, base pair uh, sequences because uh, one module uh, would bind uh, to 3 uh, bases. So, uh, 3 uh, uh, will correspond to 9 and 4 will correspond to uh, 12 uh, base pair sequences. So, in such uh, an approach, uh, uh, we join a single uh, zinc finger domains of known DNA binding specificities and through these right and his associates uh, contributed uh, hugely for the development of this technology and the platform. While modular assembly provided examples of successfully applied uh, JLFPs, uh, Ramirez and his uh, team raised concerns about unexpected uh, failure rates for modular assembly of engineered uh, zinc fingers in uh, 2008. The high failure rate uh, with this approach is likely due to the fact that they were ignoring the influence of neighboring zinc fingers uh, on the sequence specificity of a given uh, zinc finger. To overcome such deficiencies, selection guided assemblies uh, were uh, developed. So, Grisman et al. Uh, described a method of gradually extending a, a new zinc finger protein across the desired 9 or 10 base pair target site, adding and optimizing one finger uh, at a time. Briefly, the idea is to grow zinc finger modules using the first two zinc fingers of the GIF 268 trimer against a 6 base pair target to anchor a third zinc finger selected from a fast library using a new 3 base pair sequence as a bait. So, there are uh, two rounds as you can see over here. So, this is the GIF 268 first and the second uh, uh, module and the third module will be uh, selected from this uh, fast library. Okay. And uh, in after the first round, the second one is replaced and after the second round, the third one is also uh, replaced and the final uh, construct will have a very high uh, specificity. So, this process uh, uh, involve uh, repetition of two additional times uh, to replace each of the two remaining GIF 268 uh, zinc fingers. The resulting synthetic zinc finger trimer can display high affinity and specificity towards the desired 9 base pair uh, target uh, sequence. In a similar approach, uh, Jawang and his team used a bacterial 2 hybrid system uh, to optimize zinc finger binding to DNA uh, sequences of interest. Next, let us move on to the little bit of discussion uh, on the context dependent assembly uh, CODA. 
Uh, Sender and his team described this uh, called a technique, a publicly available platform of reagents and software that is simple to practice and has a success rate for generating active zinc finger arrays comparable to that of selection based methods such as open. So, context sensitive selection strategies attempt to identify combinations of zinc fingers that work well uh, together. Edu using Kola JFNs, they rapidly altered 20 genes in uh, various organisms like Jabrafis, Arabidopsis and Soybean. The simplicity and efficacy of Kola uh, could enable uh, broad adoption of JFN technology and make possible large scale projects focused on multi-gene pathways or genome wide uh, alterations. So, here in this uh, cartoon depiction or figure. Uh, you can see the zinc fingers uh, which are represented as uh, colored spheres, uh, finger 1, 2, 3 with 3 different colors binding to 3 different uh, uh, triplets and then uh, F4, uh, finger F5 uh, also binding to their respective uh, sequences and in both these you can see F2 uh, is the common uh, finger and uh, it is binding to his respective uh, sequence uh, uh, TTG. So, here as already described F2 is common to both the left 3 fingered array F1 to F2 F3 and the right 3 fingered array F4 F2 F5 and its position uh, in the middle uh, in, in both uh, the uh, uh, triplets the or trimers the 3 base pair DNA. Uh, subsites are represented as rectangles with uh, corresponding uh, colors. So, the two different three finger arrays which share a common middle finger F2 is used to create a three finger array with a new specificity by joining together the amino terminal finger F1 from the first array, the middle finger common to both arrays and the carboxy terminal finger F5 uh, from the secondary. So, uh, due to this uh, fusion, uh, this F3 and F4 are removed and this combination of F1, F2, F5 now gives a new kind of a uh, specificity. This modular uh, Assembly strategy treats uh, ZFs as completely independent units. Uh, Cornu and associates have found that CODA in contrast to the modular assembly strategy uh, yield multi finger domains that show high activity and low toxicity as zinc finger nucleases in the human cells. These context sensitive selection strategies account for potential context dependent effects including cooperativity of zinc finger binding and occasional recognition of a fourth base in the target uh, sequence. Let us now move to the next platform which is the oligomerized uh, pool engineering or open. Uh, Mulder and his team described open uh, oligomerized pool engineering which is an open source combinatorial selection based method for engineering zinc finger arrays for developing uh, JFNs. Open method has been found to have a higher success rate than previously described modular assembly methods for engineering uh, JFNs. Open selections are carried out in uh, E. coli using a bacterial to hybrid system and they do not require uh, specialized uh, equipment. So, open relies on an archive of pre characterized uh, gene finger pools that are organized based on their binding specificity to a given three base pair sequence. After identifying the desired uh, genomic target, the appropriate mixtures of zinc finger pools are then randomly assembled using overlapping PCR and screened for the zinc finger assembly displaying the most potent binding activity to the desired nine base pair target. So, here we have three archives one, two, and 3. So, we carry out uh, PCR and assembly of the 3 
uh, modules and we go for selection by uh, two hybrid methods and obtain the desired nine base pairs at the end of this process. With open resources can generate multiple customized uh, zinc finger nucleases in about uh, eight weeks or two months. But the labor and expertise required to screen community libraries have uh, limited its uh, uh, broad uh, adoption. So, this uh, figure uh, if you observe we have a uh, histec uh, in one end and then we have the zinc finger uh, triplets over here as you can see and then uh, this is the linker which join the ZF domains to the uh, functional domain and then these are the specific uh, restriction sites in this construct. So, basically uh, this is used for the production of hybrid enzyme uh, uh, zinc finger uh, nucleases. This is a map of the zinc finger uh, uh, FN fusion gene construct which produced hybrid enzyme uh, ZFN when placed downstream of T7 promoter uh, in, in an expression vector. A PCR is used to construct expression vectors of the zinc uh, finger uh, fusions. Uh, the programmable nucleases uh, take advantage of natural cellular pathways of DNA repair for the introduction of targeted sequence uh, changes. And uh, we have discussed in the earlier lecture that the dimerization of the DNA cleavage domain is uh, very, very important and we have also discussed the involvement of the various uh, residues or structural uh, components uh, in this dimerization. And uh, once that dimerization is uh, successful, um, the ZFNs will create double strand breaks. Okay. So, now uh, it may uh, follow two pathways as we have discussed in, in the beginning of our course. Uh, it can lead to non-homologous and joining and there can be some targeted uh, mutagenesis over here or it can uh, follow the homologous uh, recombination pathway and we may add a, a donor DNA over here uh, which will lead to the targeted uh, genetic uh, replacement. So, uh, we are going to use uh, the knowledge of uh, zinc fingers and focal nucleases to create fusion proteins having domains of zinc fingers and the catalytic DNA cleavage activity of the uh, focon uh, enzyme. And then uh, we are going to deploy them uh, inside a cell where they will carry out double stranded DNA breakage and then we may direct the repair either in the non homologous end joining pathway or in the uh, homologous recombination pathway by other uh, interventional steps and thereby carry out uh, gene editing uh, which may be simple point uh, mutations or uh, targeted gene replacement. The current methods to manipulate uh, plant and mammalian genomes have uh, two limitations the very low rate of homologous recombination at the targeted site and the relatively high rate of random non-targeted integration elsewhere in the genome by non-homologous and joining. In these cells, homologous recombination occurs at a very low rate compared to the uh, NACJ. For most uh, mammalian cells, targeted recombinations by via homologous recombination are overshadowed by nearly thousand fold higher random non-targeted uh, intrigants. Cells use the universal process of homologous recombination to maintain their genomic integrity, particularly in the repair of uh, double strand breaks, which otherwise uh, would be little. And these are uh, uh, important facts we have emphasized in the uh, last lectures. 
The repair of these uh, DSB in a damaged chromosome by HR is a highly accurate form of repair which uses the homologous DNA from the undamaged chromosomal uh, partner as a template. Gene targeting is the process of modifying a gene by homologous recombination uh, which uses an extra chromosomal fragment of donor template DNA and invokes the cell's homologous recombination machinery for uh, sequence exchange. Gene targeting uh, is not a very efficient process in plant and mammalian cells. Only 1 in 106 cells provide with excess template sequences undergo the desired gene modification. However, when a uh, targeted genomic DSB is introduced in cells, it induces a homologous recombination at that local site to repair the DSB in a larger fraction of the cells compared with spontaneous homologous recombination. So, for generation of specific desired genomic DSB, which is the rate limiting step in homology directed repair technology for uh, gene modification, uh, we will use uh, gene finger uh, nucleases, other similar uh, nucleases. So, they are also called as the molecular scissors for uh, genome surgery. A semantic representation of a pair of four finger uh, jellyfins. Uh, bound to the cognate sites can be uh, seen in this figure. There are four uh, members over here, figure uh, fingers, and these are the uh, nucleus domains. A pair of JDFNs require two copies of the two base pair sequence uh, recognition sites in a tail to tail orientation. They effectively have a uh, 24 base pair recognition site. Uh, for these catalysis to happen, which is long enough to specify a unique genomic address in uh, human cells. So, the off target uh, cleavage is highly reduced uh, due to this high uh, or long uh, recognition uh, site involvement. So, if they are triplets, uh, the requirement will be actually 9 plus 9 uh, or 18. Uh, base pair recognition sites. Since the ZFN binding sites in the genes are not identical, both ZFNs that bind these sites uh, need to be introduced into the cell to induce a targeted genomic DSBs. So, that is another advantage of this uh, technology. So, we need to design for both uh, the forward and the uh, backward or sense and the antisense. Uh, strengths and because these enzyme can act only if it is dimerized. So, if uh, uh, the uh, binding on any of the strengths either the sense or the antisense fails, the cleavage will not happen. So, this gives additional specificity to such a constructs. The ZFN sites in the genes are uh, separated here by around uh, 5 base pair as uh, shown in the schematics. So, single ZFN uh, array versus dimeric uh, ZF nucleus sites. So, here you see a single uh, ZF array comprising of uh, 3 fingers binding to one of the strands. So, ZF finger uh, uh, protein. Uh, bound to a single uh, JLF array target site as shown in this picture. A single JLF array target site consisting of 3 to 8 adjacent DNA triplets or 9 to 24 nucleotides on the same strand of the DNA. Each triplet of DNA is recognized by one finger or JLF module. Uh, the cartoon illustrates an array with 3 fingers bound to a single JLF array target site in this case a 9 nucleotide uh, DNA. So, here is the single ZF array versus dimeric ZF uh, nucleosides and here you have uh, two partners. The single uh, the zinc uh, finger nucleus bound to a dimeric ZF nucleus target site uh, is being depicted in this figure. A ZF nucleus target sites consisting of two ZF array sites on a complementary DNA strengths separated by a spacer of around uh, 5 or 6 uh, nucleotides. And in this configuration, a uh, FOC1 endonuclease uh, monomers in blue are uh, covalently linked to the C terminal end of each 
ZF area domain uh, forms an active dimeric nucleus and induce a double stranded break in the spacer DNA between two ZF array binding sites. So, this active dimeric nucleus is very, very important for the cleavage of DNA. Here, due to absence of its partner on the other strands, the enzyme is not active and it is not able to cleave. So, this concept is very, very important to understand the mechanism by which uh, zinc finger nucleases operate. So, let us now study about ZFN mediated uh, gene targeting. Uh, let us now study about ZFN mediated uh, gene targeting. Uh, in the earlier slide, we discussed about the requirement of dimerization of the nucleus domains to induce a double strand break. So, we are going to use that uh, double strand break generation by ZFNs uh, for ZFN mediated uh, gene targeting. So, there is a gene X uh, as you can see in this uh, uh, picture and then uh, we uh, expose it to zinc finger nucleases which will uh, generate a double strand break in this gene uh, because uh, the zinc fingers that we have designed uh, bind to the sense and the uh, antisense uh, strand and the ZFNs uh, dimerize to generate this double strand break. Now, uh, due to some kind of uh, deletion events, uh, there may be some kind of uh, mutation occurring here, uh, but uh, this uh, pathway comes into action over here and there then there is a, a mutagenic uh, repair due to NSEJ non-homologous end joining and we get a pool of mutants with insertion or uh, deletion in this uh, case. Now, similarly, if we add uh, zinc engineered zinc finger uh, nucleases and we also add some mutant, mutant uh, donor templates. So, there will be um, template dependent repair in this case, uh, which is due to the homology directed repair and then we get here a uh, specific mutant uh, uh, which is directed by the uh, donor template. So, this is the strategy by which we use the ZFN mediated uh, gene uh, targeting. This ZFN mediated gene targeting involves uh, various steps as follows. Um, number one, you need to deliver ZFNs alone uh, to induce a targeted DSB in gene X of normal cells and stimulate NSEJ to generate a pool of mutants, some of, of which will be frame shift mutations resulting in functional deletion of uh, gene X that is knockouts of gene X. Alternatively, we deliver ZFNs and the mutant gene X donor fragment into normal cells to induce a targeted DSB and stimulate homologous recombination to generate a specific gene X mutant that is knockouts or knock-ins of gene X as the case may be to achieve gene editing. Deliver ZFNs and the correcting donor gene X fragment uh, into the uh, mutant cell. The second step is to monitor for uh, gene correction or, or, or mutagenesis at the targeted gene loci as per the investigator provided donor gene X template. And it is also critical to show that the donor DNA fragment has not integrated elsewhere within the genome of the cell by using uh, southern blood. So, this has to happen exactly here and not uh, somewhere else and that has to be confirmed. So, it is an important step uh, in the ZFN media mediated uh, gene targeting. ZFN mediated gene targeting in human cells, uh, let us study a bit about it. Uh, targeted ZFN mediated disruption of the gene X by NSEJ occurs when cells are transfected with designer ZFNs alone. The ZFNs induce a targeted genomic DSB in cells which stimulates non-homologous end joining that is mutagenic by nature. It gives rise to a pool of different uh, gene X uh, mutants. Let us now discuss about ZFN mediated gene targeting 
which involves various steps as followed. And uh, the first step is to deliver ZFNs alone to induce a targeted DSV in gene X of normal cells and stimulate the non homologous end joining to generate a pool of mutants, some of which will be frame shift mutations resulting in functional deletion of gene X, that is, gene knockouts of gene X. Alternatively, uh, deliver ZFNs and the mutant gene X donor fragment into uh, normal cells to induce a targeted DSV and stimulate homologous recombination to generate a specific gene X mutant that is uh, knockout or knock-ins of gene X as the case may be. To achieve gene editing, uh, we need to deliver the defense and the correcting donor gene X fragment into the uh, mutant cells. Once this is done, uh, we need to monitor for the gene correction or uh, mutagenesis at the targeted gene loci as per the investigator provided donor X uh, template. And it is also very important to uh, determine that the donor DNA fragment has not integrated elsewhere within the genome of the cell by using uh, southern blot. So, identifying ZFN target sites uh, near the targeted locus within the uh, gene X of interest is the first most important step in this procedure. Next, in this procedure, we go for designing and or selecting uh, gene finger proteins that recognize the Susan ZFN uh, target sites and then we convert uh, the designed and or selected ZFPs into ZFNs by uh, attaching it or covalently you know uh, binding it to the nucleus uh, domain. So, this is a uh, resource site from where uh, you can get many of the reagents required and uh, uh, you have these uh, various uh, platforms as well here, the open and the uh, modular assembly uh, engineering uh, reagents and we have discussed about these uh, various platforms uh, earlier. Numerous research groups have experimentally determined uh, gene finger modules that bind many of the 64 possible uh, DNA triplets. A couple of web based tools that facilitate the design of gene finger proteins uh, that can bind the specific DNA sequences are also available. Uh, these tools are most often based on a widely employed method of uh, JFP design. Uh, the modular assembly approach in which pre-existing individual gene fingers are linked together uh, to recognize desired target uh, DNA sequences. Uh, GFIT uh, leverages the combined capabilities of three of the largest and best characterized uh, module archives by enabling users uh, to select fingers from any of these sets. GFIT searches a query DNA sequence for target sites for which a ZFP can be designed using modules available in one or more of the three archives. In addition, ZFIT output facilitates identification of specific Jink finger modules that are publicly available from the Jink finger uh, consortium. This is uh, ZFIT is freely available uh, from this site and uh, you can download and you can uh, use it uh, or experiment with it and try to generate some zinc finger nucleases, uh, maybe just for fun. So, this is how uh, this uh, website uh, resource looks. Uh, this is a software package and which is designed to aid research and application of gene editing and expression technologies. So, uh, this identifies potential target sites in DNA sequences for several DNA binding platforms using publicly available reagents and protocols including for CRISPR cas and tails uh, and of course uh, JLFPs. We are going to discuss about these other two uh, technologies uh, soon one by one. Now, uh, how do we deliver uh, the uh, gene finger nucleases uh, inside the cell? Uh, we now have the capability to design JLF uh, uh, modules by various uh, platforms and you also know about 
uh, software platforms available uh, which can be used to design effective uh, zinc finger modules and then we can attach those uh, to nucleases and generate ZFNs of our interest uh, and, and uh, specificity uh, to bind to DNA targets uh, of our choice. Uh, now, once we do that, we need to deliver it uh, inside the cell so that uh, it goes inside the cell, bind to the specific uh, DNA sequences and then generate double stranded breaks and allow uh, the cells uh, uh, DNA uh, repair mechanisms to take over and uh, give the desired results whether it is a point mutation or uh, uh, gene knockout or uh, gene knock-in. So, they are very uh, uh, different kind of uh, delivery uh, methods uh, used for uh, gene delivery. We have viral vectors like AAV, ADVs and uh, LVs or lentiviral vectors, uh, adenovirus vectors or adeno associated vectors. Then we have, uh, so you can see here the uh, different uh, 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 viral vectors uh, being used in this case. Then we have non-viral vectors uh, which may be uh, polymers, liposomes, uh, etc. or cell penetrating uh, peptides, uh, CPPs. Then uh, we have uh, other methods, physical methods uh, which may be microinjection, uh, electroporation, uh, etc. So, these in brief constitute the three major type of uh, gene delivery uh, platforms or uh, methods. So, in vivo delivery systems for uh, gene finger nucleases and their expression cassette. So, we use virus as we already told uh, in the earlier slide. The virus life cycle involves infection and replication. In infection step, the virus enters into target cells after recognition and release the viral genome uh, for replication. In replication step, the progeny are released outside cells after synthesizing the viral genome copies into cells. Following these fresh infection steps in nearby cells happen or circulation begins. This is useful in using uh, virus vectors to encode and deliver genome editing programmable nucleases to target tissues or cells and achieve uh, genome editing uh, therapy. So, one of the earliest uh, uh, viral vectors used was the adenoviral vectors or the first generation adenoviral vectors which are obtained by substituting the gene uh, E1 or uh, E1 and E3 um, followed by the second generation ADVs which lack more than two early uh, genes including E2 and E4. Uh, compared to the first generation, the second generation ADVs provide an extended genome packaging uh, capacity. However, it is limited by the inflammatory response of the host and the inability of replicating in vivo including its cytotoxic T cell uh, response. A systemic uh, delivery of ZFNs against HIV infections has uh, currently entered uh, clinical trials. The expression unit coding the right and left ZFNs is inserted into a serotype 5 ADV, pseudotyped with uh, serotype 35 uh, fiber. The ADV ZFN system is designed to repair the autologous CD4 plus and helper T cells from uh, HIV uh, infected uh, patients. Another virus that is used is are the uh, lentiviral vectors. Uh, the retrovirus can spontaneously penetrate the intact nuclear membrane. For this lentiviral vectors are now commonly used for in vivo delivery in uh, genome editing uh, therapy. As the delivery vector of ZFNs technology, lentiviral vectors which can accommodate sequences up to around uh, 10 kilobases uh, or theoretically uh, allow for site specific genome modification or addition in predefined uh, genomic sites. However, they have been avoided because of uh, multiple tragedies involving patient death in earlier uh, uh, clinical trials. Therefore, advanced types such as intriguous defective lentiviral vectors have been heavily explored uh, in, in the uh, recent years. Another viral vector that is used uh, in uh, delivering 
uh, gel effects for genome editing uh, is the adeno associated uh, virus vector. Uh, the adeno associated virus vectors are the commonly used delivery vector in genome editing technologies for its potential site specific integration ability and low immunogenic characteristics unlike the others uh, discussed earlier. Some examples of these are isocohedral non envelope viruses in the uh, dependovirus genus of Favoviridae family. However, it also has certain limitations. Uh, the major limitation of AAV vector system is their relatively small genome size around uh, 4.7 uh, kb uh, which restricts the genome engineering nuclease complex uh, that they can carry. However, with careful design uh, sequences for expressing Z defense, each sequence is around 1 kb and an optional donor DNA template can be encapsulated well by uh, the AAV vectors. We can also uh, deliver Z defense uh, directly. So, uh, for a protein to be delivered uh, directly overcoming the barriers in the cell membrane, uh, penetration by proteins due to their low lipophilicity, pH sensitivity and degradation by endogenous proteases, uh, we have to devise certain uh, strategies. Uh, fortunately, ZFN proteins can penetrate uh, cell membranes due to the positive charge of uh, CIS2, HIS2, uh, gene finger domains and it has been found that the direct delivery of ZFN proteins can disrupt the CCR5 gene in both uh, HEC 293 HDF cells and human uh, CD4 plus T cells. Increasing the stability of ZFN proteins uh, is vital or critical to achieve the direct delivery of uh, ZFN proteins because ZFN proteins will be completely degraded in uh, within 4 hours. One of the possible strategies to keep ZFN stable is to modify the lysine residue uh, needed in the uh, degradation of the uh, protein. So, these are uh, in brief the typical in vivo delivery systems and candidates for genome editing nucleases uh, and their expression uh, cassettes. Uh, you can see here the typical delivery systems, the viral system AAV, ADV, HE, ADVs, then you have uh, uh, here others uh, not important for uh, gelifin. Uh, uh, mostly uh, the AVs are used for gelifins as well as CRISPR-Cas9 and uh, ADVs also uh, being used over here. And uh, this slide is important from the point of view to understand uh, the status of the uh, clinical trials of these particular delivery uh, platforms. Uh, uh, here uh, information is not available or they are not uh, being put forward for uh, clinical trials. But here you can see that uh, the ADVs, uh, the clinical uh, trials uh, one uh, has been uh, completed as well as uh, clinical uh, trial phase 2 has also been completed. Uh, there are certain advantages of this, uh, they are uh, low, they show low of target uh, mutagenesis. But uh, the problem is the immunoreactivity and also the cost uh, currently. Let us uh, go to the next section of this lecture uh, where we will discuss about the design strategy uh, of uh, JDFNs. So, first let us uh, uh, have a small discussion on fusion proteins which is uh, maybe very familiar to you. Uh, particularly we use many uh, fusion proteins. Uh, by fusing the uh, uh, gene uh, uh, green fluorescent protein to it so that we can uh, trace the location uh, of the uh, targeted protein by observing uh, the fluorescence of the green fluorescent protein. So, if fusion protein is an artificial protein uh, which is constructed by joining at least two domains of individual proteins that are encoded by separate genes. And for that matter, uh, ZFN is a fusion protein in a way. It, it is uh, joining uh, the uh, gene finger domains uh, with a nucleus or catalytic domain 
of Fokwan. Such a fusion gene is transcribed and translated as a single unit producing a single polypeptide. Uh, fusion proteins can also occur in vivo due to uh, chromosomal uh, rearrangements. They are not just engineered all the time, they may happen due to uh, natural uh, chromosomal rearrangement due to any of the mechanisms, uh, cellular mechanisms, inherent cellular mechanisms. So, okay, a, uh, this is the mRNA of a uh, fusion gene. We have uh, gene 1 here, uh, which is contagious, con continuous to uh, gene 2. And then uh, as it reads through the uh, ribosome uh, for the translation process, uh, we get a product uh, of two proteins uh, which are uh, covalently bound to one another. Uh, the fusion uh, protein product, you can see this is 1 plus 2. Uh, the two domains may carry out two different, uh, continue to carry out the independent functions uh, which was there in the native uh, protein. So, uh, there is another uh, important concept that we need to remember uh, or learn at this moment. Um, those are the 2A peptides. So, what are these 2A peptides? So, these 2A peptides are 18 to 22 amino acid long self cleaving peptides. They induce ribosomal skipping during translation of a protein. We need to remember uh, the term uh, ribosomal skipping. Okay. So, uh, let us go back to the earlier slide. You can see mRNA becomes a protein only after uh, translation that happens in the ribosome and we have a term here ribosomal skipping which is related to the word uh, ribosome. Two A peptides share a core sequence motif of DX, EX, NP, GP and are named after the virus in which they have been uh, first described. F2A is the first described 2A peptide derived from foot and mouth disease virus which occurs uh, basically in uh, bovidae or for example in cattle. The two, name 2A comes from the gene numbering scheme of this particular virus. So, F2A basically derived from foot and mouth disease virus. Others like uh, P2A is derived from uh, porcin Tesco virus and uh, T2A is derived from uh, Tosia Asigna virus. So, we have uh, at least uh, say three uh, different uh, peptides which can induce ribosomal skipping namely the 2A peptide known as the F2A peptide or P2A peptide or T2A peptide. All these assist directly in synthesizing polyproteins by causing the ribosome to fail at making a uh, peptide bond. What we mean by this we will learn very soon. So, we have seen this construct of two genes, uh, gene 1 and uh, uh, gene 2 to create a fusion protein. So, they are continuous one after the other, but in our uh, current scheme of things, we are going to introduce uh, these uh, F2A peptide particularly uh, in between these two genes. And by doing this, we are going to have a very different kind of an outcome. The introduction of these 2A or F2A sequence will lead to ribosomal skipping. What do you mean by ribosomal skipping? This is a mechanism of translation in which a specific viral peptide prevents the ribosome from covalently linking a new inserted amino acid and let it continue translation resulting in co-translational cleavage of the uh, polyprotein. However, the molecular mechanism of this two-way peptide mediated cleavage is still not very clear. Uh, clear, uh, clear. Uh, uh, there is a probable explanation uh, given forward by uh, some of the scientists. Uh, the cleavage is triggered by skipping the formation of peptide bone between the proline 
and glycine in C terminal of uh, two way peptide. The peptide located upstream of the two way sequence will have extra amino acid on its C terminal and, and the peptide located downstream the two way sequence will have an extra proline on its N terminal end. So, this is the fusion protein of gene 1 and gene 2 which has a 2 A intervening separated by a 2 A intervening sequence. So, when uh, translation takes place of these uh, mRNA the first protein uh, is produced uh, ok and moment the ribosome come in interaction with the 2 A sequence there is a skipping or ribosomal skipping happening as a result of which the protein 1 will be released. But uh, the translation continues uh, beyond 2 way sequence and it goes on to produce the second protein. So, by this method of inserting a 2 way sequence in between the sequence of two genes mRNA uh, sequence of two uh, genes uh, we can produce two separate proteins in a single read and if we do not have that sequence we will have a fusion protein because there is no any two way here but in the case where two way is introduced we get two different proteins so, this strategy design strategy is uh, very very important uh, for ZFN design. Uh, we uh, go back to the fact that uh, the endonuclease domains of Focon must form dimers to cleave the double stranded DNA sequences. So, ZFNs are required in pairs to bind to the target sequence and we have also discussed a si single uh, ZFN uh, molecule is not going to cleave the DNA. We need a partner which bind to the complementary strand. So, these binding of two ZFN molecules uh, uh, in the opposite orientation with the correct spacer uh, is, is very very important uh, for double strand breaks. So, uh, to provide uh, two ZFN uh, molecules uh, inside the cell, uh, we may clone them into uh, separate vectors, but the success rate would be low because if one of the vectors do not enter or uh, efficiency is low or for any other reason uh, uh, the, the, the vectors are delivered, but one of the constructs uh, ZFNs are not uh, expressed uh, properly. Uh, the dimerization is not going to happen uh, satisfactorily and the double strand break generated will be low. To avoid that uh, we will put both the ZFNs into one single construct and separate it by a F2A sequence. We cannot uh, generate a uh, uh, fusion protein because that is not going to be helpful to us. So, this will ensure that both the ZFNs are delivered inside the single cell and they produce both the uh, nucleases which will bind to the specific targets and after dimerization they will form the double strand bricks and allow the desired uh, mutagenesis uh, to occur. So, the introduction of the two-way sequence helps us in cloning them together and ensure the co-expression as well as the double strand uh, breaks. So, here is a symmetric representation of different constructs of uh, baculovirus uh, vectors. So, uh, number one uh, you have uh, carrying either of the uh, ZFNs. So, you have the ZFN L and uh, ZFN R and you can now understand what is this F2A uh, sequence is all about. So, ZFN L uh, may be binding on one of the strands and the ZFN R will bind on the uh, other strand. So, uh, this CMB is the human uh, cytomegalovirus intermediate 
early gene promoter. ZFNL is the gene finger nucleus targeting the left flank of the CCR5 uh, gene. Uh, okay, uh, in, in this is an important uh, gene in the pathogenesis of HIV, which we are going to discuss uh, in the applications part. The gene finger nucleus uh, ZFNR is the uh, ZFN uh, targeting the right flank of the CCR5 gene, and this F2A is a two-way sequence derived from the foot and mouth uh, disease uh, virus, and these are the uh, homologous uh, regions. Uh, uh, of the DNA sequences and uh, this is a polyadenylation site and in certain other constructs we use the uh, GFP and uh, you have the LTR which are the long terminal uh, repeats. So, uh, to sum up uh, briefly, uh, we can have uh, various constructs of uh, Bacolo virus uh, where uh, we carry uh, the ZFN right and uh, ZFN left sequences, uh, intervening sequences with intervening F2A foot and mouth disease uh, 2A uh, sequences and we know that this is being done to ensure that both the ZFN molecules are uh, delivered uh, together and expressed uh, together to carry out efficient double strand breaks and the targeted uh, mutagenesis. Thank you uh, for your uh, patient hearing. Mm -hmm.